Today, what we are going to do is we're going to be demonstrating soil sampling. Soil sampling can be done for a number of different reasons. Typically, we do it on an unplanted field prior to planting. However, there are times when we need to assess nutrient status for certain crops during the season, in which case it would be more like on the field where there are plants. For the most part, soil samples are collected to determine what the nutrient status of the soil is and assess plant available nutrients in the soil so that you can adjust or manage your nutrients during the growing season. Other important factors to bear in mind are things like soil salinity or saltiness and other chemical characteristics such as soil pH, which are very important in managing nutrients as well as water. There are other soil tests that are sometimes conducted. However, for the most part, soil sampling is done to assess nutrient status in the soils. There are a number of different tools that you can use for soil sampling. We're going to demonstrate two of them here today. One, which is probably the most readily available tool, is a shovel. The second one, which you may or may not have available, is a soil probe. If you're a soil scientist like me, you always have one of these available. This one in particular is called a hammer probe, and we will be using that, so I'll demonstrate how it works actually when we're soil sampling. But you'll notice that the probe itself has a tip that's beveled and sharp that you can push down into the soil, and then with the aid of the hammer, it may go into the soil more deeply. Soil sampling depth is often important and it really depends on what crop you are planting in terms of what depth you want. So for something where it's fairly shallow rooted or where you're concerned about the nutrition in just a fairly limited area, you might want to sample from zero to six inches. In many other crops with a deeper root system, zero to 12. And then oftentimes we are interested in looking at what is available for the crops in a much deeper area. So you might also want to sample from 12 to 24 or the top two feet. These would be two separate soil samples. And occasionally with very deep rooted crops, we will actually collect a third sample depth, particularly for nitrogen movement and or leaching of salinity and go all the way to 36 inches. One of the things that's important is to make sure if you are taking samples to different depths that you have containers to use for this. And in this case, we have two clearly labeled containers, one that says 12 inches, one that says 24 inches. And again, these are color coded, which is really handy, but we would put our zero to 12 in this and our 12 to 24 inch sample in this. When you're collecting the sample, typically you will collect more than you actually need, and that's a good idea. Um, and then we will take the sample from our sampling container and put it into a bag. The type of bag you use is really up to you in terms of what you have available. This is a paper bag. This is a good size for it. I sometimes also will use a quart size Ziploc bag. What's very important is that you label the sample bag. This is not only important for the test lab that you send it to, but also important for you for your own record keeping. Include the name of your soil sample or some sample identification. And so there I've just listed a name. And the other thing that's important is to put the date of your sampling on it. So I'm going to put on today's date so that I will have a record of when I collected this sample. Field size is important and it's important in determining how many cores or how many different probes or shovelfuls will take. But one of the things that's also important is to remember that you want to take a composite sample across the whole field. Just going out into one place will not show you what's available across the entire field. So when we're demonstrating the actual sampling, we will be 
going across in different locations on this field. In a smaller field like this, you may not have enough ground to take a huge soil sample, so you might want to take at least a cup. Two cups of soil sample is better, and most of the time when I'm soil sampling, the amount I actually have in my pail or my bucket is in excess of what I need. Again, the bigger the field, the more samples you need to take, again, to represent how large the field is and the variability in nutrients across the field. So with that, I believe I've covered the information we need to, and now we can show you how to soil sample.